1 John 5, 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has, that has overcome the world, our faith. 2 Chronicles 20, 15, do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast army against you, for the battle is not yours.
praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All I know is, have you read the end of the scripture? And we won. Yes. We won. We won the victory. Hallelujah. We won. Hallelujah. So let's celebrate and thank the Lord. Hallelujah.
It is so good to be in the house of God with each of you today. Uh, don't you love and appreciate the Abundant Life House Praise Band? Thank you, thank you for always bringing us the presence of God. Father, here we are, the people of God. We found our way to your house. We are in obedience to your word. And our faith is high. We're expecting great things from you, and you've never disappointed your people. So we ask now that you give us your best, uh, things that you've had held in reserve for a moment like this. Speak by the spirit of revelation and let us know the truth that sets us free. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Well, are you as excited to be in church as I am this morning? <laughs> Before you're seated, uh, shake hands with uh, one of your neighbors or bump an elbow. It's great to see all of you and to have all of you here who are uh, worshiping uh, by live stream with us. We call you a part of our assembly today. Good morning, everybody. I tell you, it is a good day at Abundant Life Church. Um, we have two candidates for baptism today. We have Carrie and Molly Marlowe. Uh, Carrie's husband is Joe. Molly's her daughter. Alain is um, her son. It's good to have, uh, always have Harvey and Marla Lyles here, worship with us, good brother and sister, and faithful in the church. And it's good to have Joe's family here today to be a part of this, uh, this celebration. And um, so I'm excited to do this. And Carrie, you know, I believe that the Lord is stirring the waters of your heart, just like he's stirring the waters up here today. And he's got so many good things ahead for you. And so uh, because you have confessed Jesus as your Savior, and that's your confession, I am so honored to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Good. All right. All right, Molly. This is Molly. Everybody say, hey, Molly. <laughs> um, Molly is 11 years old, and what a testimony. This is to say that God is my God. He's the one I will serve. He's the one I will follow. And Molly, because you've confessed Jesus as your Savior, and you believe that with your whole heart, I'm so honored to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. God bless you, young ladies, and God bless you, Pastor Steve. Pastor Steve, does it ever get old baptizing never. new believers? Never. If you've never been baptized, the water's warm. It's a public confession of your faith. The water's warm. Okay. Uh, congratulations to the Lyles family, too. Yeah. This is part of uh, their tribe, and so uh, we celebrate uh, public testimonies of our faith in Christ, especially our young people and especially in families. It runs in the family. I do want to mention that our prayers are with uh, Miss Katie Haynes, Katie and Randy, uh, faithful members of our church for many, many years. And Katie's brother, at age 70, went home to be with the Lord this past week. His uh, service was yesterday afternoon, but uh, Randy and Katie and their family still uh, in church again this morning, the day after. Your faithful people, Holy Spirit, comfort you during this time. Give you strength. Our prayers are with uh, uh, the Haynes family during this time. And uh, I want to see if I can call uh, uh, Captain Darren Yarborough. Is that you standing in the back, sir? Would you join me on stage just for a minute? Today is National Law Enforcement 
Prayer and Appreciation Day. And don't we appreciate our law enforcement officers? Remain standing for just a moment. Uh, we want to join with thousands of other churches all over our nation today who are calling for prayer and appreciation for law enforcement. Now, of course, uh, Captain uh, Darren Yarborough, uh, Deputy Sheriff here in Florence, uh, no stranger to anybody in our city and surrounding areas. Uh, he's also a faithful member of our church, and he uh, serves as the head of our security team. Uh, he and, and Mike Jones together with security and ushers. If you see uh, one of these men standing around the room with a coat on, you should treat them very nicely. That's all I'm saying. But not only do you keep us safe here, but you have put your own body in the line of fire to protect our community. And uh, it takes courage. It takes a calling to do that and we honor you and you stand in proxy for all of the law enforcement uh, officers city level county level state level federal level and uh, we thank god for you and for your colleagues and what you do to keep us safe and we just want to pray for law enforcement today can you stretch your hands towards uh, our captain as he stands in for all law enforcement officers. Father, we thank you for great men and women who feel a call to look evil in the face and do battle against them as first responders. Lord, we live in a crazy world where the unexpected happens almost daily, and those who are on the front lines are the law enforcement officers that serve us and protect us they keep us at peace, so we pray for the law enforcement officers that you would keep them and their home at peace as they keep us at peace. And as they serve and protect us, we pray that Psalm 91, that special chapter of safety and security, would be a very real word from God to Captain Darren, and to every law enforcement officer at every level. We appreciate and we offer our prayer for their protection today. In Jesus' name, and the whole church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You may be seated, and uh, just before we get into the Word, uh, maybe uh, a couple of announcements, uh, just a couple. And one is uh, a concert tonight. It's a free concert with Lawrence Tuning. And the thing that's unique about tonight's concert is he has a live band. Usually when he does this, he has the drummer from Atlanta Rhythm Section. And uh, Lawrence, are you, you're back here, Lawrence and Trish. We're coming over to enjoy a concert tonight. It's 6 o'clock tonight at Lamb's Chapel uh, on Southborough Road here in Florence, one of our sister churches, a great church here in our city, Pastor Lonnie Curl, a good friend of ours. So join me and all of uh, uh, the others who will uh, uh, be blessed tonight by uh, a concert, Lawrence Tuning and the live band. And then one other announcement, that is um, Father's Day. Ladies, it's our time next Sunday. Next Sunday is Father's Day. We'll be honoring all of our dads. So bring your dad to church, and we have a nice gift that we will give every dad uh, at the end of our service next Sunday. So uh, we thank God for our dads. This is the first year, uh, first Father's Day, I will be without uh, my dad. Uh, who went uh, home to be with the Lord uh, last October at the age of 87 on his birthday. So uh, uh, if your dad is alive, uh, bring him to church. We want to honor him and bless him next Sunday. 
Now, uh, we're getting into the Word, but let me say uh, at the end of the message, uh, we're going to uh, open up our altar and uh, uh, offer personal prayer and ministry to you. It doesn't take long. It's not a counseling session. But during our service this morning, if you feel a witness that a prayer of agreement would be a blessing to your life, if you're dealing with any issue in any area and just want a prayer of agreement prayed over you, you'll have that opportunity at the end of our service. We appreciate uh, uh, the men and women who will be offering themselves to you in prayer. They will be agreeing for your need to be met, and uh, the Lord may bring to their mind a verse of Scripture. They'll give it to you right then or speak the word of the Lord into your life. So uh, if you have need for prayer, we offer that prayer and personal ministry at the end of our service. I want to talk today about something heavy, something very real. Now, I'm aware every time I stand to minister, I'm speaking to people, some who've been born again just a few weeks, some who've been born again for decades, and they're veterans. And my goal always is to believe God, to speak a word that everyone can hear something, regardless of how young in the Lord or how mature in the Lord that you are. And uh, today, I want to go deeper a little bit in the Word. I want to talk this morning about spiritual experiences. Now, if you are born again, and if you are, say amen. amen. Right place, right crowd. If you're born again, then you have had a spiritual experience. We may not be aware of all of the uh, trappings that go with that, but if you're born again, you've had a spiritual experience. But Paul had several spiritual experiences and one was the ultimate. We want to read those four verses to begin with. And my point today is as we get closer to heaven, and all of us are headed there, and we are at different milestones on the journey. Some of us are closer than others of us, but while we're on the journey it's possible for God to visit us and to catch us away in the Spirit and speak to us and reveal things to us. It is a spiritual experience. Let me read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Paul doing the writing. And he says, This boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up in the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. And then he repeats it. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body. But I do know that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words, things no human is allowed to tell. I want to talk this morning about caught up in the third heaven. It is a talk about spiritual dimensions. The message translation, Paul said, there I heard the unspeakable spoken. What a contradiction in terms. And yet, we in our finite, limited understanding of things natural and spiritual, we have no idea of what could be heard in a realm of the Spirit where Paul was called up. I heard the unspeakable spoken. The Passion Translation, 
Paul said, there I heard many inexpressible secrets that were so sacred, no mortal is allowed to repeat them. Now, Paul had a supernatural spiritual experience, and he said, I was caught up in the third heaven. Jews, Christians, and Muslims, all three religions, teach about the third heaven. Now, Paul had had, had, had some other spiritual experiences before this. On the road to Damascus, when he was Osama bin Laden of his day, and targeted Christians for torture and imprisonment and murder. God caught him away then with a blinding light. The light was so bright he was blind for days and it knocked him off of his horse and he heard God speak and give him instructions of what to do next. And then in Acts chapter 22 and verse 17, Paul had another spiritual experience and he worded it like this. Now it happened when I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple that I was in a trance. There it is in Scripture. As we go along during our physical life as a believer on the road to heaven, from time to time, God chooses to catch us away and to uh, give us an experience that is beyond our natural ability to comprehend. In the 27th chapter of Acts, Paul had yet another spiritual experience. This time he was on a, a ship and uh, there were over 200 men on board the ship with him. A storm came up and uh, was torrential for days. And Paul wrote and said, all hope that we would be saved was gone. Have you ever been in a place where all hope was gone? Paul was there. But then he said to the men on the board, don't be afraid for your life because an angel appeared to me last night and said, do not be afraid, there will be no loss of life. Now an angel appeared. I don't want to be spooky. Don't want to get weird on you because I'm a natural man. And uh, I don't like to be super goofy. But an angel appeared to Paul. Now that would have, I believe an angel appeared to me one time. Uh, but he looked like a biker from hell's angels and the reason I, I i think he was an angel it happened at uh, santa barbara county jail in california and brenda and i took a three-hour drive uh from where we live to to the jail uh, to uh, carry a bible to the son of a friend of ours who lived on the east coast and just found out his son was in jail and Santa Barbara and called me and said, would you go visit him and would you take him a Bible? So we drive and we walk in and we wait and we're in this big waiting room with a lot of people and as soon as I get to the window, tell them who I'm there to see and, uh, and uh, I have a Bible to give him, uh, the person behind the glass window said, that's contraband. We don't allow any visitors to bring the Bible or any books, so we won't be able to get that to him. So I said, okay. So I go and stand, Brenda and I are by the wall, waiting to be called. This man walked in, and he was bearded. Let's see if anybody says there's an angel in here today <laughs> looking like that one. Well, I thought uh, uh, nothing about it other than this. And he came straight up to me and whispered. He saw I had a Bible in my hand. He said, uh, who you want that to get to? And I gave him the name. And he said, I'll get it to him within the hour. That's what I do. I said, thank you. So I walked away. And after my visit, got in the car, and I thought, you know, 
How did he do it? How, how does he, it's contraband, they won't even allow, but, and he did get it. I found out from his father a week or two later, he got that Bible. To, the Bible says that be careful when you entertain strangers because in so doing, there are times you will entertain angels, but you will be unaware that they are angels. Now, that's all a God thing. Uh, uh, he may have been a real man. If so, he may be in big trouble. Uh, but uh, there, there are laws that are different for the, sp for the spirit world than the natural world. Now, in the natural world, we have to respect the natural laws, the laws of physics, the laws of gravity, the law of time, things that are limited to the natural, the law of travel. I can only be at one place at one time. Why? Because of our physical limitations. But in the spirit, there are different laws. And as we travel this journey and get closer and closer to heaven, there are many biblical accounts to where as people are traveling in that direction and the closer they get from time to time, God lets them in on a secret, shows them a, a glimpse, speaks to them a secret on our way. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven. Now let's look at this right here. Paul said, uh, I was caught up in the third heaven. I want you to notice this was not the rapture. Paul was not raptured when he was caught up into the third heaven. When he was caught up into that place and heard the unspeakable spoken and he heard inexpressible secrets that no mortal is allowed to repeat, it was not after the rapture, it was, of course, before the rapture. Now, the third heaven is also known as paradise. It's defined like this, the third heaven. Now, it is heaven, nothing less than heaven, but it is the abode of God. It is the domain where God rules, where Jesus, the Son of God, dwells where archangels and all of the angels, cherubim, seraphim, dwell there. And it's where the will of God is done always, without conflict, without challenge, not any whatsoever. That's heaven. When Jesus was crucified, he was between two thieves, and one thief, even in the dying moments of his life, believed on Jesus, and Jesus said to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. That man, that thief, that in the last minutes of his life believed on the Lord Jesus, was the first believer given entrance to heaven by the blood of Jesus. Paradise. Paul called it the third heaven. Now, there are three realms I want to speak to briefly, just three. First is the earth. We're very familiar with the earth. We dwell here. Now, the earth is the lowest level. It's where everything is natural and physical. Because we're on the earth, we have to have a body. This body is temporary. And our bodies are important while we're on the earth. Our bodies are our vehicles. Our bodies transport us from one place to another. And when we are at this low level, the, the lowest level of awareness of existence is the earth level, it's easy to think everything is just about the natural. A lot of believers live there. They may even be born again, but they never wander far from the fundamental basics of this is the physical, natural world. They're more aware of the physical and the natural, not any at all aware of the heavenly world. That's why if you're born again, we need to always remember this. I am a spirit. 
and I live in a body. My body serves me well. My body can take me places. But I have to obey the law, the speed limit. I can only go so far and so fast because we're confined to the restraints of the physical and the body. That's why I like to remind myself often, I am not a human being having a spiritual experience. I am a spiritual being having a human experience. While I'm having my human experience, my body is my transporter. I also remind myself that everything visible and natural is influenced by that which is invisible and spiritual. Now, as long as we live on the lowest level, where we're only aware of the natural, then our five natural senses come in handy. None of that has to do with anything of the Spirit. But as we get closer to the third heaven and even as we mature in general in the things of the Spirit, our five natural senses are secondary and our spiritual gift of discernment kicks in and we rely on that. Now, the earth is the foundation. The second category is the atmosphere above the earth. That would start at ground zero, ground level, and it would go up through the atmosphere of the earth and into outer space. That's where spiritual activity and warfare take place. One of the devil's names is the prince of the power of the air. So if there's spiritual warfare going on, it's not only limited to the earth, the lowest level, but also the earth's atmosphere. If we could only see into that realm spiritually, we would see a lot of activity going, angels and demons having it out, fighting over your house, and your health, and your family, and every blessing God wants to give you, and the devil wants to prohibit from finding its way to your life. That's where the warfare goes on. And then the third level. First is the earth, then there's the atmosphere where spiritual activity takes place, and then there's the third heaven. That's the ultimate. This is when your God consciousness is at an all-time high. As long as you just keep your eye on the things below, just consider only the physical and the natural, uh, you have no God consciousness at all. But the closer you get to the third heaven, and the more we grow in this journey, the more God conscious we are. After all, He's omnipresent, and He's everywhere. It's easy to go a day, it's easy to go a week without really being aware I'm, I'm, I'm in the presence of God. Because we are so attracted and bound to the natural realm, the physical realm. Our destiny is heaven, and some of us are closer than others. But now, that's why also this scripture is important. 2 Corinthians 4.16, Paul says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. That's the body. The outward man, it's getting older, and over time it may get weaker. If you live long enough, your strength will wane. David, the psalmist said, he weakened my strength along the way. So it's just a natural principle and a spiritual principle to match. As we get older, our outward man is perishing. But the inward man, this is the spiritual good news, is being renewed. So we're getting more keen, more discerning, more conscious, more aware of all that lies ahead. And Paul was taken up to that place. He said, I don't even know if I was in my body or not. Now that's 
an expression and a concept and a reality for a lot of people today. We've heard of people who have out-of-body experiences. Well, Paul, uh, 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 I think he probably was out of his body because he was in the third heaven. The inward man, stronger every day, being renewed day by day. There's a song that one line in the song expresses what I'm talking about very clearly. The song is, turn your eyes upon Jesus. And the words to the chorus go like this, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and here's the line, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Have you ever had an experience that was so good you could barely stay in your skin. It was spiritual. It was, it was God-ordained. It was Him catching you away and showing you something. Paul knew what that was like. And the closer we get to the third heaven, and some of us are closer than others, then the things of this world grow strangely dim in light of His glory and grace. Now, Colossians 3 and verse 1 it says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. We're told right there. There's something above my head. Ultimately, heaven, paradise. But it's above. I'm to seek those things which are above. Here's what we do as a culture. We get up every morning and we spend 40 hours minimum of our week seeking first material things. Got to pay the mortgage. Got to buy gas. <laughs> we might need a second job to pay for the gas. So we are trained because we're earthlings trapped in a human body right now. We're trained to pay attention to the natural and the physical and give that priority. But the Bible makes no mistake when it says, Seek not the things beneath, but seek the things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. And then it says, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. You know, if we could go this week, just this week only, beginning now the next seven days, and absolutely keep this to the letter. Set your mind on things, and don't be thinking about things on the earth. Could we make it a week? I mean, but that's the goal here, is to seek those things which are above. There is a bridge between earth and heaven, and we are located on that bridge, some of us at different milestone markers than others. And that bridge is a portal that gives us access to this higher dimension in the Spirit where visions and revelations are made known. Secrets are revealed. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever gone somewhere in your mind? Some of you are there right now, I, I can tell. I can see that expression on your face. Some of you are already at Longhorn. <laughs> Have you ever been in one place and your mind was somewhere else? Then certainly, if our mind can take us to another place, then surely our spirit can take us to a higher dimension. Oh. I'll say this, and I don't want to create a, a doctrine, and, uh, you know, uh, I just see some things that I haven't seen before. Imagine if the real Carl, the spirit man inside this vehicle, not the body, but the spirit, the real Carl, if I were not restrained and held back, by my human body, which I need right now while I'm on earth, but imagine what spiritual life without 
the physical body limitations would be like. Just imagine it. Now, because the real me is in a body and I have to obey the laws of physics and gravity and law enforcement, you know, I, I, can't, just, uh, I can't just immediately, instantly leave here and be in uh, Managua at the blink of an eye because physically I've got to travel. But spiritual bodies are not limited to that, and spiritual bodies travel at the speed of God's will. I would love to say, oh, I want to be in uh, Leopaya, Latvia right now, and I'm there. I can't. I've got to take a 30-hour <laughs> trip before I get there because of my... But if when that day comes, when we're no longer trapped inside a physical prison of bones and flesh, and the real us is set free... We can travel at the speed of God's will. You can just think and be there if it's the will of God. Not only that, but if it wasn't for these bodies, the Bible says spirits can enter. I mean, they have access to places where the physical body can. They can just walk through walls. That's in the New Testament. Just walk as if the wall wasn't even there. Spirits just walk in. I tell you, it's a very real thing, and I'm not uh, any more uh, mature than you are, so please don't think that. But I remember uh, this clearly. Uh, Miss Catherine Grimsley was a saint of God in our church. She was one of the mothers of Israel among us, uh, a praying woman, a woman with bulldog faith. I'd rather have her praying for me than just about anybody. She's been in heaven now for about 20 years. But, oh, years after she was gone, a few years after she was gone, I was riding in my car in Florence. And it, I, I, I was so aware. I mean, don't think I'm nuts. I am a nuts now, but <laughs> not because of this. But I could, I could sense Miss Cat in the car, in the passenger seat. And I was so aware. And now I can't, you know go crazy over that. I'm just saying the spirit world is so real and they're not limited like we are. I do know there are times when some people that we have loved, our loved ones who are gone on, uh, I, I, I can sense uh, their spirit near me at times. Well, the Bible doesn't contradict that. It talks about a great cloud of witnesses. In Hebrews 12, 1, a great cloud of wit those people who were on the earth and now they're no longer confined to their, they can just travel all over the universe at the speed of God's will. They can get in the car with me for a minute if, they, if the Lord wants them to. And the more, uh, I'm sure you've heard testimonies like this, where uh, people who are, uh, are saints of God, they've been serving God for years and getting closer to heaven and and, and the closer they get to heaven, and especially uh, in their dying hours, many testimonies I've heard where they would describe things they saw. They can see something that we can't see. And they begin to call out names of loved ones that they see now. They see them on the other side. So uh, as we get closer and closer to heaven, then things of the earth lose their appeal to us. We're more attracted to what's ahead. The earth loses its gravitational pull on earth little, little by little, and, and, and heaven starts pulling us stronger than the earth's gravity does. John said, John the Revelator said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And then what happened? Because he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, God showed him things that had been secret. He 
wrote the book of Revelation. But he began by saying, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And then God caught him away, and God gave John the secrets that were hidden in the book of Revelation. Now, this thing of there's a connection, a bridge between the earth and heaven. The people who are not born again, they're never aware of it. In fact, they don't even believe they go anywhere. This is it right here. You die, and that's it. But those of us who are of the faith, and we know the truth, uh, then we know there's something above our head, something better for us ahead. And we stretch in that direction. But even in the Old Testament, the concept of there being a bridge between heaven and earth and there being interactivity between heaven and earth and there being access by spirit beings to leave heaven and come to earth and go back, it's even in the Old Testament when that covenant was not as good as this covenant, the new covenant is. Let's consider Jacob's ladder. In Genesis chapter 28 and verse 12, it says, And then Jacob dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending. And then in verse 16, it says, Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. I'm going to start looking at coming to church a little differently. How awesome is this? This is nothing less than the house of God, and this is the gate to heaven. Then another spiritual experience that was so real. It took place on earth, but it was so real. Is the Mount of Transfiguration. During the life and ministry of Jesus, he took Peter, James, and John, called them alongside, took them to this mountain, Matthew 17 and verse 1 says, Now after six days Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. He was transfigured. That happened on earth. Didn't have to wait until the rapture for metamorphosis. And that's what the Greek word is, transfigured, metamorphosis. One catching away in the Spirit by God where he reveals things that have been secret and it will make the difference in our lives as much as the difference is between a caterpillar and a butterfly. Metamorphosis. After we're caught up in the Spirit. And then Matthew 17 and 9. This is important. Now as they came down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, said, tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. You'll notice Jesus mentioned that a lot when he would perform a miracle uh, he would tell them don't tell anybody about this i've wondered uh, i've wondered but now after this mount of transfiguration this experience to where peter james and john and jesus go to the mountain and it's such a spirit jesus clothes started shining his face was like a brilliant light and Moses and Elijah that have been dead for centuries, they appear and they're having a conversation. And Peter, James, and John are able to overhear what they're saying. And then on the way down from the mountain, that wonderful experience, it had to be, Jesus said, Shh, don't tell nobody about it. <laughs> Why not tell everybody? 
because it's a secret. There are no words. Some experiences in God cannot be described with words. You just have to be there and be a part of that experience when God speaks some things that are unspeakable, reveals a secret, a vision, and a revelation to you, and it's you just have to be there. You just have to be there. So that brings me to this. None of us are excluded. If we sought after that more, now don't seek a sign and don't see, but it's okay to pray. God, reveal more of yourself to me. Catch me away where you are. Lord, let me hear you issue the invitation, come away with me, and I'm ready. I'll be there. And share some secrets with me, some visions and revelations. Some spiritual experiences are so intense, you just got to be there. I'm going to close with this because I've never been caught up to the third heaven. Never. Uh, but it's possible. If it can happen to Paul or to anybody else in Scripture, it can happen uh, to one of us as believers. But uh, back in 1981, I was a 25-year-old young man, and I was uh, the happiest man in the world then, like I am now. <clears throat> it was a Friday, early that October. I had uh, We lived in Spartanburg. I left the office and uh, went to the gym. Back then, I thought there was a need to work out. I worked out for a while, but then I found that verse that said, bodily exercise profiteth little. And so, now it didn't say it profits nothing. It just said little. But uh, I got over that. But I was at the gym working out, 25 years old. I remember the first time I was aware of something not right or something a little different was I was laying on the bench press and I was doing this. And, and uh, I was aware as my arms lifted the weights up and down. I couldn't feel them. I saw it. I knew I was doing it, but I couldn't feel it. And I thought, hmm. So I sat up and thought, am I sick? Am I coming down with something? Because things were a little different and I went home, and by the time I got to the house, I told Brenda. Now, this was not a third heaven experience. I've not had one. This was a spiritual experience for me, though. So I know it's possible. I told Brenda, I said, darling, something's not right. And I don't know what to say. I can't describe it. But all, all I will say is this. If I die tonight, and she got real concerned at that point I said if I die tonight I just want you to know there's something about me that's more complete than it's ever been right now so I went to bed I woke up the next morning and it was still there and the bottom line is for a month I was caught up and I walked in the spirit now I uh, that was the first time I'd ever heard or, or no I had heard about walking in the spirit but it had not been an experience for me until October of 1981. And for about 30 days, my five natural senses were dull. They weren't as sharp as they usually are, but my spirit was sharp. I knew how to answer people when they would ask questions uh, from in here instead of in here. And it was just a normal flow. It was just... And so I knew within the first day or two, oh, this is what the Bible refers to when it's talking about walking in the Spirit. And God showed me things that month. Uh, it was just about me and uh, my place in the world. And, and uh, it was just a special time. I ran out of gas in my car that month. It, it don't make you perfect. But I was so, uh, I was so caught up in in the sharpness of that spiritual ad adventure that I wasn't paying attention to natural things. So, I mean, I ran out of gas and literally coasted. 
to the gas pump. And my car stopped right at the gas pump. I thought, well, that was perfect right there. But then the Lord said to me, now you might be in the Spirit. You might be walking in the Spirit, but you got to put gas in your car. <laughs> and that was a wonderful, I have a file still in my office uh, of notes that really wouldn't help you. And it was just for me. It was like God tutoring me for those few weeks as a young man, sharing things with me I would need in order uh, to uh, live a great life and to serve him effectively. And uh, so then it left me. Now, it's, it's, I've, I've known it off and on at times, but I'm just saying I've seen enough. And I've not had a third heaven experience, not like Paul had. As far as I know, I've always been in my body. <laughs> I've never wondered, was I out of my body when that happened? I've never, I mean, there's other stuff out there I've yet to experience. But if God's in it, I'm ready for it. And it's a destiny for all of us. We all want all God has for us. And I'll say one more thing, too. And I don't know, and please forgive me. This is new to me, and I can't use the right words. It's just so, but it's not a new doctrine. Hey, if you find anything in here that contradicts anything I say, go with this and forget what I said. I'm not trying to be controversial, but God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. Omnipresent. Uh, he's with you all the time, wherever you are. The problem is we may not be aware. Why? Because we're more earth conscious we're more physical uh, uh, natural uh, but the more we become matured in our spirit we're more god conscious and if god is omnipresent and he's everywhere all the time whether we're aware or not then we who are Children of God, the Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with God. So I believe when we shed these physical bodies and we cast off the restraint that we have in our earth life with these human bodies, then there's a chance wherever God is, we can be there too. And he's omnipresent. I'm not trying to get too spooky. Study it. I'll give you some homework. Just study on it. Just get in the book and see what the Lord would say uh, about it. But I feel something tugging. I feel something pulling me. Uh, and I think it's, it, it, it happens to every believer at some point. If it hasn't happened to you, surrender and submit to it. Ask God, take me where you want me. Reveal secrets to me. Catch me away anytime you want me. Let me hear you say, come away with me, and I'm there. And it can be a divine encounter. It can be a supernatural experience. And there's even the possibility, as it was for Paul, to be caught up to the third heaven before the rapture or before you die and go to heaven. All that's in the book. That's all I'm saying. Would you stand with me, please? Everybody stand and bow your heads. And I'd like for the uh, prayer team uh, to come forward at this time those who are offering themselves in prayer for any needs you may have. Every head bowed. Now we do have people at the altar here who will uh, pray specifically for you. So if you're carrying a burden, there's no need to leave with it. You can leave it here in just one minute when we dismiss. Uh, if you have a need for prayer and personal ministry, come forward. Uh, Miss Ruthie, one of the ushers, will help uh, direct you. And uh, we believe prayer can make a difference. Every head bowed. Father, thank you for our time together today. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us to live another day. And we do it to the glory of God. Lord, I just pray that you would speak a blessing over your people. Would you pour out your favor this week on the people of God. Would you reward those that are here, those that are worshiping, uh, live stream with us? Would you reward them for their worship and for their faithfulness on the Lord's day today? Would you bless them all week long? Now, Lord, we uh, anoint 
Uh, this altar, we consecrate it. We say this is a place where heaven and earth will meet and everyone with a need will have that need addressed and prayer will make a difference in their life. We thank you for the faith that's stirring now that prayer makes a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. We're dismissing you, but before you go out that door, if you have any need for prayer, come forward and receive prayer. Have a great week.